I'm going to give you a quick tour of bones. Um, dogs are very good uh, for showing this. You want to just make sure you've got some good sutures or at least some good landmarks. Uh, this is a coyote from the collection, Canis latrans. And when we're looking dorsally uh, at it from the, from the top view, right, um, you start here, these, these prominent nasal bones, okay? And then from the nasal, uh, you have the frontal, the frontal bones. Um, a lot of times you have these things that stick out over the orbit called the post-orbital process um, of the frontal bone, and that's, that's generally a landmark of the frontal bone. Here you see a suture coming down here to separate the frontal bone from the parietal bone. A lot of carnivores have, again, a prominent sagittal crest, and uh, we'll see in some other things like gray foxes a prominent parietal ridge. Um, it's almost like this has, you'd almost call this a frontal ridge because most of that is on the frontal bone. And those are all, and then this is the occipital ridge back here. Um, and all of these are attachment sites for uh, temporalis muscles, which are used in, in, in downward bite forces. If we turn this skull laterally to get a lateral view, uh, we have a premaxilla bone here. And the premaxilla bone always has the incisors. And here's a nice suture here. Um, that separates the premaxilla from the maxilla. So here we have incisors, and this is a prominent canine that you find in carnivores. And the canine premolars and molars are all in the maxillary bone. So this is all maxillary, and we'll see that in the, in the ventral view as, as well in just a bit. Here we have a structure, um, and I'm just gonna turn it over so that the tag's not in the way. Here we have a structure um, that's made up of two bones called the zygomatic arch. And the zygomatic arch is made up of two bones. The posterior bone here is the squamosal bone, sometimes called the temporal in humans, but in mammalogy we call this the squamosal. And then the jugal bone um, here. Okay, so again, here we have the premaxilla, the maxilla, the jugal bone and the squamosal bone, and then we're back up on the, uh, the parietal bone here. And here you can kind of see a suture for the squamosal bone um, as well. Turning this ventrally so that we can get a ventral view, you also uh, have a palate region of the premaxilla. So here's the premaxilla with its incisors. So you can count the teeth, you can do your dental formula. Um, from this view. Okay, so here's a suture here. Um, and right on the suture line, you have the canines. Okay, but the canines actually bend back. They're actually rooted in the maxillary bone. So this is the maxillary. And then um, here you can see a suture, and this is the palatine uh, bone. So the whole region here is the palate, is the palatine region. It's a little confusing because you've got a palatine bone and you've got the palatine region made up of the palatine, the maxilla, and the premaxilla. This is an interesting structure. This is the incisive foramina. Uh, we'll come back to that when we get to communication. Um, this opens up to a, a, a structure called the vomeronasal organ, which is used for detecting pheromone cues. And so you can get a lot of information from the size um, or the prominence of the incisive foramina uh, as to how well developed the chemical communication is in, in this particular mammal. In dogs, of course, it's very good, so you get a very prominent incisive foramina. You come back here, um, kind of looking down from the posterior, you've got the foramen magnum, which is the opening to the brain case, um, and the occipital condyles. Both of those are on a prominent occipital bone. And then moving from the occipital bone, here's a suture here. This is the basisphenoid, and then the presphenoid, and then you've got the vomer, which is keeled, that goes underneath the palate here. And then these wings on the side, um, here are pterygoid bones. Okay, so this is pterygoid. This is actually part of the palatine 
um, bone. And there's a prominent kind of cool bone, a um, little hard to see. It's the first bone in from the squamosal, though. There's a suture here, and then there's a prominent bone called the, the allis phenoid bone. And that has some structures, for example, in the canidae and in the ursidae, uh, there's a structure called the allis phenoid canal that is diagnostic for um, the family, the bear and the dog families. Okay, only bears and dogs have this, um, have this allis phenoid canal. And then we have auditory, the auditory bulla is a structure, and that can be made up of different bones as well, and we'll get into um, that a little bit. Uh, here's the lower jaw of the coyote. Okay, just to get a sense of, again, you can use uh, uh, these teeth to get a dental formula on the coyote. Um, and in lateral view, so the entire bone here in mammals is dentary. Okay, so there's a single bone in the lower jaw of mammals. And then there's three structures on the dentary bone. This structure here is called the cornoid process. Um, this structure here is called the articular process that articulates with the upper jaw. And then this structure here is called the, the angular process. Okay. And that is your quick tour of bones using a coyote.